as some of you might be aware of, I have a small obsession with minerals. I really like the intricate shapes and structures they can form. One of the first things I do when testing out new render engines is I try to render a given piece of a mineral crystal, for example quartz. And building a general quartz geometry is not that complicated, but getting it right takes a bit of experimentation and trial and error. For example, when you look at this image of a quartz from Wikipedia, you see several things happening. On the one hand, of course, there's the general geometric shape of the crystals. On the other hand, there are small inclusions, there is birefringence, there is dispersion. Also, there is this slight unevenness in the crystal, how the crystal is formed. And also, there are cloudy parts and, of course, some fractures in the crystals. So what we have to do in order to model a decent quartz crystal is take care of all these imperfections. The first step is to actually model the geometry of a quartz crystal. What you want to research in order to give you an idea of how crystal shapes are formed is you want to google crystal habit. Yes, there are a few sites popping up which will inform you that drugs are bad for you, but just add quartz crystal habit to your google search and you will be directed to pages that show you how the shapes of quartz crystals form. And if there's anyone out there who is into minerals and who can explain this better or give some additional in-depth information, I'd be happy if you guys contact me because I'm really into this stuff. But the the general idea of how I understood crystals form is basically by combining different hexagonal and trigonal shapes. In essence, combining different platonic solids. And what I want to do for a crystal is I want to combine a hexagonal shape with a dodecahedron using one of the new cool features in Houdini 16, that is the Boole tool. So in Houdini, let's drop down a Geosop, call this one crystal, dive in there, delete the file node and drop down a tube, which is gonna be our hexagon. Let's set the tube to be a polygon with six sides and end caps. Also, let's scale back its radius to something like 0.1 and let's add vertex normals. Okay, this is our hexagonal shape. Let's create the dodecahedron by dropping down a platonic and setting it to dodecahedron. Let's add normals, highlight this and add a transform, scale this down a bit, translate it upwards a bit, and rotate it. So let's drop down the new bool sop and wire up our tube and the platonic and highlight the bool. And you see, we immediately get this shape here, which will be our basic quartz crystal. The next thing I would like to do is there are these small dents in the crystal when I look at this image here. So let's account for this. From our rule, I'm going to drop down a convert line, which will take our polygons and keep only the edges. And after that, I'm going to drop down a scatter node, scatter points on those lines. In our case, let's scatter 120 points and disable the relaxation. Now I'm gonna create a sphere, set that to be polygon as well, increase the frequency and dial down the scale to something really small. Now I'm gonna drop down a copy to point sop, which in essence is the old copy sop, which just contains the functionality to copy objects on two points. Wire up the sphere and the scattered points in here, highlight it and we see we now scattered the sphere onto those points. What I want to do, however, is vary the scale of the sphere a bit. So let's drop down an attribute randomize. And we'd like to randomize an attribute called P scale. It is only one dimensional, it's just one float, and it should be between zero and one. Wire this up in here, and we see we have now randomly scaled spheres. And what I want to do is subtract these spheres from our basic quartz crystal shape. However, these spheres are a bit too round, too perfect. So let's drop down a mountain sop to distort them a bit. This is a bit too huge. So let's decrease the height, also decrease the element size. And that looks promising. So let's create another bool. Put this to the side, wire up our basic geometry in here and our clone spheres in here, highlight the bool, and this takes a little while. And let's set this bool up, not to do an intersection, but to subtract the second input from the first input. So we end up with something like this. And we wanna uncheck collapse tiny seam adjacent edges, right time to save this, 
And when we look at this quartz image again, we see in those areas here, we have internal fractures of the crystal. So let's try and model these. For that, what I want to do is basically take a noisy volume, mesh that, and use it as an intersection in another Boolean. So we can cut the crystal into different kind of slices. So let's create that volume by first dropping down a bound node to get the boundaries of this basic crystal here. And let's add some padding to it. Like so, and turn it into a VDB. VDB from Polygon Sub. Dial down the voxel size. Let's use a fog VDB, fill the interior, and have only one exterior voxel band. Highlight the sub. And now let's drop down a volume bob and fill this volume with noise. Let's dive into the volume bob and let's drop down a unified noise. Wire its output into the density slot here. And let's wire up the position to the position input. Let's promote the fractal type by middle clicking on it. Going to promote parameter, same for the octaves. Lacunarity, roughness, and scroll down here. The basis, the frequency, and the offset. Let's set the fractal type to terrain, and set the frequency to, let's say, 17 for now on all channels. And drop down a convert VDB sub. And let's convert this to polygons. Let's dial up the ISO value, something like this, and drop down another Boolean. And let's set this to shatter. Highlight it, fingers crossed. And we can see we have now a fractured crystal. Let's uncheck Collapse Tiny Seam Adjacent Edges again. And what I found when looking at different photos of quartz crystal is, what we now model is a uniform distribution of internal shattering because our noise is pretty uniform, our noise that we're meshing into geometry and using as an intersection geometry. And what helped tremendously in increasing the realism of the crystals that I modeled was driving the noise frequency by its position within the volume. So let's do that by using the bounding box position here, which goes from zero to one in each axis, depending on where in our volume we are currently in this voxel. So let's convert that with a vector to float, pipe in our bounding box here. And we are interested in the Y position in our volume. Let's use that to drive the overall frequency of the noise. And what I want to do is multiply this with a given number. So let's drop down a multiply here wire up the Y output in here. Let's drop down a float to vector four to convert the result of the multiplication back into a vector with four components, which is gonna drive our noise frequency here. Like so. Okay, dive up one level. And what we need to do is increase this input number two, which is the second port on our multiplication node. And in our case, let's set this to 40. So we can see we get this behavior now. So we have lots of fractures at the top and bottom end of the volume and a rather low number in the middle here, which is exactly what I wanted. Also, what I want to do in the convert VDB node is dial down our ISO value. And in our volume bob, let's set our noise type to Wally. -E like so. Again, these are parameters that I dialed in by lots of trial and error and test renderings. I ended up using those because they looked good. Let's highlight the Boolean again. So looking at this image of a quartz, another thing that's happening within the crystals are these small inclusions. So let's create those by using a similar technique that we used to create this intersection geometry here, starting with a VDB from Polygon Sop with a voxel size of 0 0.003. Again, we want to create a fog VDB with one exterior band and we want the interior to be filled. We wire this up to the Boolean and after it, drop down a volume bob again, dive into that bob and drop down a unified noise again. Wire up the position and the output goes straight to the density out. Let's promote the standard inputs. Dive up one level and set up our noise. Now let's use a convert VDB again. And convert our volume to polygons again. Let's highlight this and we might want to dial up the ISO value like so. 
So we have this really nice inclusions going on here. Save that and add normals to this geometry. Okay, what we have now is this fractured quartz crystal with these chips that have fallen off the edges. And we have this inclusion geometry here. Let's just drop down another normal behind our Boolean. So our crystal has some normals. Okay, let's drop down to material nodes to assign materials to on the one hand the inclusions and on the other hand on the crystal and merge those two. Finally drop down an output which will be used as the general geometry output. Okay, time to build our materials. Let's drop down a material network, dive in. And the material network replaces the shop context. So either what you can do is on our top level, go into the material level or in the OBJ and geo level, just drop down a material net and build your materials in there, which has the advantage that you will copy your materials over if you're copying geometry or setups around. So that's what I'd like to do. And in here, let's create the shader for the crystal. And what I'd like to use is the classic shader, which is one of the two kind of uber shaders that are there in H16. On the one hand, there's a classic shader. On the other hand, there's a principal shader, which relies on the Disney shader model, which some artists find easier to use. I'm kind of a fanboy for the classic shader. So let's drop this down. And what I want to do here is on the one hand, disable diffuse, because when I look at my crystal, it is refractive and reflective, but does not have diffuse. Let's check that we have enabled the base reflections, which we can leave as is. Don't need a reflect code yet we should enable refractions. And I would like to choose the GGX refraction model. And what this allows me to do is I can dial in dispersion down here. And dispersion is gonna take care of these color fringes that we see here, because it'll bend light differently according to the light's wavelength. What I also see when looking at this crystal on the one hand is this kind of bumpy structure that comes from the way the crystals have grown like layer by layer and this milky inclusion area. So let's model both in the shader on the one hand by enabling subsurface and let's decrease the scatter distance and those tiny crystal layers that you can see build up in reflections. Let's model them using displacement. Let's disable true displacement and use a noise for displacement and increase only the noises frequency along the y axis, which will yield those layered structures. Also, let's just play with the offset a bit. Again, values that I found out by trial and error and decrease the amplitude. That should be good. Let's disable subsurface for a minute. And in our OBJ level, drop down an environment light as well as a camera by control clicking on those icons. And in the environment light, let's load up an HDRI, render light geometry, and make sure our cameras is locked to our viewport. Zoom out a bit like so. Go to render view in the out level and we already have a mantra IPR drop down here. So let's just go to rendering and set our render engine to physically based rendering and hit render. Okay, we see on the one hand we get more normal errors. On the other hand, we haven't attached material. Let's take care of both. So in our case, let's just go to the OBJ level, dive into the crystal geometry and let's take the cheap and easy route here and just dial down the cusp angle to say something like three, which is gonna fix my normals for now. Of course, I admit this is a cheap method, but in this case it works. Let's assign the material to our main geometry. Let's just pick the material we created. Hit accept and go to the render view. And while this test rendering is converging, we can see several things. On the one hand, the fractures were kind of nice. The dispersion is there. We have small problems with our inclusions because they turn out black. That's what these black spots are in there. So we have to take care of those because they don't have a material yet. And those chips work nicely. Also, I'm getting some black artifacts here. I'm wondering if this is either a reflection of my background HDR or maybe my ray depth isn't high enough. So let's to the out node and in the mantra node under limits, let's dial up the reflect and refract limit. Let's just check in our material under settings. There are two things which I wanna change. On the one hand, I want to disable the shade both sides as front that was giving me errors and was giving wrong results. Okay, that seems to have taken care of the most dark spots. 
Also, what I want to check is the inside IOR, which is the refractive index of the material. And 1.33 is the IOR of water and not of quartz. And I think quartz's IOR is, let me look this up. Yeah, something like 1.46, 1.458 in my case. So this means my material bends light stronger. Let's take care of the inclusions. And what the inclusions are in most cases are kind of air bubbles. So let's model a quick air shader again using the classic shader. And I want to uncheck the diffuse again. Let's keep the reflect and enable the refractions. Let's use GGX here as well. No dispersion. And under settings, let's set the inside IOR, which is what's inside of my volume, which is air, to 1, which is the refractive index of air, and the outside IOR to the refractive index of what's around this area, in our case, quartz. So let's set this one to 1.458 and call this shader air, head up one level, go to this material node here and assign the material, like so. And as you can see now, the black spots are gone and they've been replaced with small inclusions in the form of air bubbles. Okay, the last thing I would like to adjust in this shader are the cloudy areas of the quartz that we see in this photo. I would like to model them using subsurface scattering. So in our material network, in the classic shader, which is our quartz shader, so maybe we should call this quartz. And also on the quartz shader under subsurface, let's enable subsurface scattering. In our out, let's go to the Mantra IPR and let's increase our subsurface limit, something like eight, and our diffuse limit to two. And on the sampling, let's dial up the subsurface quality a bit and let's go back to our material quartz. And in our case, let's just dial up the subsurface intensity to 10. And we can see parts of our crystal now turning into this milky kind of cloudy crystal. However, what I'd like to do is have only parts or only certain areas in this quartz to be milky. So let's use one of the new features of the material net and use a noise to drive the subsurface intensity. So let's drop down a unified noise and under the surface tab, subsurface is way down here. Subsurface intensity is this. Let's pipe this in the out and the noise needs a position. Let's stop the rendering for a while. And the position is derived from the global variables. So let's drop down those and we have our position here. So let's wire that into the noise and just our noise settings. Again, found them out by trial and error. And what kind of worked for me was a simplex noise with a standard fractal type. Frequency was all set to seven. I had the gain checked set to 0.9. And I also had the output range enabled and set the new maximum to seven. Let me just check. Yes, yeah, should be it. So let's collapse that, save and hit render again. And what we can see now is that we have areas in the crystal like here and here where there's the cloudiness showing through coming from the subsurface. And we have areas like here, which are pretty clear and transparent. So that is working. And in order to render out a final image out of this, I would increase my maximum amount of ray samples to something rather high like 64, 128 maybe dial down the noise level a bit and then let this converge, which might take a good while, admittedly. So the takeaway here is basic crystal shapes are nothing more than a combination of bools and platonic solids on the one hand. On the other hand, you can use the new bool features to really detail and fracture geometry and is really powerful and stable. The new material networks give you on the one hand cool features such as dispersion. On the other hand, they allow you to directly adjust shader parameters on the material level without diving into to the materials themselves and just wiring up nodes and chaining nodes together, which is really comfortable and a really straightforward workflow. So while I set this up for a final rendering and let it converge forever, I hope you're having fun with this. I hope you're creating amazing artwork with this. Always intrigued to see what you guys come up with. And it's cheers and goodbye.